Today we're gonna test our idle air control motor. I'm gonna show you a symptom of a failing or a sticking one, and then we'll go through and check out some paperwork on how to properly diagnose one of these. This is a 1985, so it's the straight through motor where the hoses go in one way and come out the same way. The later years, which would be LH 2.4, um, I think it only is gonna have it in one way and out at a right angle. Don't mind the exhaust leak. Now, if it was really high idle earlier, the first thing you wanna check for is a vacuum leak. The quickest way to do that, take some brake cleaner, spray around the intake manifold because it's pretty susceptible to leakage there. Also spray um, around these hoses and just check them for leaks. These elbows like to crack and break. Of course, the idle air motor has this big hose that also can break and then the one that goes into the intake itself. In addition to the brake booster hose here, you know, if it gets flexed too many times and it's old, it can break. And then also the flame trap, which attaches to the back side here. So our first test will be to unplug it. Of course, disconnect the battery. Oh boy, the wiring insulation is so stiff on this, I'm afraid of breaking it if I flex it. I'm gonna show you some of the pinouts here. Now the instructions I got, of all places, AutoZone on their website has a beautiful write-up of how to diagnose these. So I'm gonna walk you through it. We're gonna test both the valve and then the circuit. On the valve itself, you're gonna see pin one, two, and three with a little nub looking down. Okay, you can see our little nub, our single nub, you know the other side has two nubs. That's pin two but that's, you know, down relative. So that means our diagram is going to be something like this. Pin three is going to be on the right, two in the middle, one on the left. Pins three and two. That's the middle pin and the pin on the right. It's all relative. Resistance between those two pins right now, 22.1 ohms. Oh, that's pretty high. <laughs> We're looking at between 10 and 14. Uh-oh, let's make a note of that. Okay, pins one and two, left and center. Resistance, 24.2 ohms. We wanna check the three pins now on the circuit. The circuit wiring at terminal two, with the ignition on, the voltage should be battery voltage right at terminal two. Our battery at the moment is right at 12.05 volts, 12.04. So as I turn the key on, uh, the middle pin on that should get 12 volts. And I will pull up the little connector in here, try to be very careful not to break the insulation because I want that wiring to stay as together as possible. And we are getting nothing. Measure the voltage at terminal two. Voltage between terminal two and ground. Well, that's weird. I'm getting 12 volts when I have it at battery, which means maybe two's a ground. Terminal one. Terminal one to ground should be six to 8.5 volts. Terminal one, according to our diagram, with the retainer clip up, terminal one is on the right. Let's see if we're getting 6.5 to eight volts. And no, we're not getting the right voltage there. That's interesting. Now, <laughs> use an ohmmeter and check resistance at terminal three. Turn the ignition on and measure the resistance between terminal one and ground. Terminal three, terminal three should be, should get zero voltage. Terminal three, okay. We're getting 12, that was rude. Use an ohmmeter, check resistance at terminal three. Turn ignition on, measure resistance between terminal one and ground. 
and resistance should be, I don't think this is right at all. Something's very wrong with this test. All right, so this AutoZone paper, it looks like the same one in the pictures, but I'm not, none of these terminals are lining up correctly with the, uh, you know, we have a straight through. The LH2.4 is the one with the angle on it. We have a straight through idle air control, but our readings are not correct and our pinouts don't seem to be correct either. So if you look carefully at the top of the paper, it says Volvo 240, 740, 760, 780, 940, 960, 1990 to 1998. That's all LH2.4 stuff, but this is not an LH2.4 idle air control motor. Maybe I've got one to show you. I'm not sure where AutoZone's getting all this mixed up because this is an LH2.2 motor. It goes straight through. This is an LH2.4 motor, which is everything 1989 and onward. It's got two pins and it has an angle versus being a straight through plumbing, okay? What's going on, AutoZone? Well, I was a little surprised to see that they had the instructions there. So why don't we just scrap these? It's probably useful for a pinout, but We'll go straight to the uh, forums and we'll see what we can do here. Looking at this nice little thing here. Disconnect the quick connector for the air control valve. Test the battery voltage on the middle pin. It's the pin number two, which is a green wire with the rubber slid off. Pin two is in the middle. You should detect 12 volts or something with the engine running. Turn off the engine. Test for ohms on the idle air control motor between the middle pin and any of the side ones. You should get about 20 ohms in each case, which is what we did between the middle pin and any of the side ones. So let's check again for resistance. Between the middle pin and the side pins on the connector, 24.2, and on the others, 22.1. Okay, those are great. Now we wanna check voltage in the middle with the key on. The middle pin on the connector, we're getting, well, that one's getting 12 volts to ground. That's a ground pin? Hmm. I say, are you wired correctly? Here's an interesting development. The ground wire is actually on the middle, and that's um, pin number three. Pin number two is brown, and number one is a brown and white. Hmm, is this the wrong wiring harness for this car? Okay, I think I figured this out. the idle air control motor with that blue and white wire. Don't ground the red wire, don't mess with that, just the, ground, the blue one. So it shows you that the motor is working, but why am I getting a high idle? like a replacement unit. Real clean inside. Hmm. Let's go back to OEM, but we'll clean it first. Well, the stuff that came out of here wasn't too bad, so I think this is ready to go back in. This ends in a 520, just in case that's important. There's an arrow on the bottom that tells you airflow. Don't mix that up either. So airflow goes into the engine. 
Let's go get her mounted back on the car now. Let's check one more time for continuity. Let's see how our idol is now. We've finally changed over our valve. Idle screw all the way in. That's good. Now I'm going to back out to get it about 500 RPM, I think. I think right there. And then unplug this. There you go. It should only go up about 200 RPM when you remove the ground pin on that connector. Here's the briefing on the end of the day. It was all down to this faulty motor. There was a time where I thought it might actually be the wiring on this because it's a replaced wiring harness according to the last owner. He just said, oh, I bought a refurbished wiring harness or something like that. It's wrapped in electrical tape, which tells me it's been gone through and usually what refurbished means is there's no cracking or any wires that were cracked were replaced. Uh, there was the throttle position sensor had a loose wire. It was the large white and blue that has got two wires going into one terminal and the little plastic clip in there was kind of loose So I made sure to tighten that up and then I also went and Looked online for a while to find out what was going on with the wiring Why was my green wire which everyone is saying is in the middle off to one side? I needed a pin out, but I couldn't get a pin out because you have to subscribe or pay for a membership or sign up for a free thing it, some forum and all those PDF files were kind of inaccessible. Now I've got like four or five of these repair manuals for the Hanes, which would have told me exactly what the LH 2.2 wiring was for these, specifically for the 1985 year, which may be the same as 1986. So after a bit of searching, I did find one of the Volvo green books. Oh, I didn't get mine out of the closet because they were under a whole bunch of stuff and I have like Amazon parts on top of it and it was just something that is a little inaccessible at the moment. So it was faster for me to just keep looking online and I found eventually an old Volvo green book that somebody had scanned a PDF of and it showed one, two, and three are the terminals on the connector, but the air control valve has three, five, and four on the housing that's stamped on there. Now this is an aftermarket housing made by AIP and the, it's IAC number 42, idle air control 42. It looks perfect and it looks clean inside, but man, it's aftermarket and uh, obviously that was our issue. So this is probably just a paperweight now. On my pump, <laughs> I guess I can't throw the prop away quite yet. On my pump on the side of the housing, there were the numbers cast three, five, and four and it was actually in sequence three, four, five, whereas on the diagram, three, five, and four showed five being green wire in the middle. So I thought, I knew it, the green wire's in the wrong place, this is the wrong harness for the year, and that's why it never ran right. However, as I pulled out my spare pump out, I saw the, the terminals for the same car. This was the pump that came with the car, so thankfully they kept that original part in the back with all those extra parts, and it had the terminals three, four, five. So the green wire was off to the side. Okay, wiring was all right. So what I did then is I, I looked up how to do the test for grounding the circuit on the side, which is that blue and white wire. You ground it, you're supposed to lose about 200 RPM as your idle air control valve is shut off. There's still a little bit of air that can flow through here into the engine, which is drawing vacuum, of course, and the, most of the air will be through the little idle adjustment screw. And that's where you set the idle, I think, to 500 or 550 RPM. And then you plug in the pump again uh, by removing the ground cable on the connector, the test connector, and you should get your additional 200 RPM and should be right at about 700, 750, depending on what you like. 
There's also a little trick for people if you're having real issues with diagnosing, uh, if you're having like stalling issues during uh, air conditioner being cycled on. I think that's what the third terminal might be for, just to give you a little extra kick. I'm not sure. So I'm really glad I didn't have that snap reaction of, oh, obviously my terminals are in the wrong place. Let me stick the green wire in the middle, and then that way I would start going and, and hunting the wrong issue, or I could have caused some damage to the ECU. As you see, the white wire goes to the ECU negative, the green wire goes to the ECU positive, and then our brown wire goes over to the relay, and then that relay also sends power to the injectors when you're cranking the engine over. So there's a lot going on in there, and you just want to be careful not to mess with the ECU on these cars, because they failed in the past for other people, uh, probably from something as simple as just grounding the wrong thing or sending power through a ground wire and frying one of the transistors inside the computer. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry, just try to fix OEM problems with OEM parts because as we're finding out over the years, these cars, you know, it can be a real headache to hunt down the wrong problem. And you think, look, I just replaced my fuel pump, for example. Well, I've got a good aftermarket pump in there. Why am I not having an issue? And then you find out, yeah, eventually it was your pump that failed. So that's a lesson learned today. That being said, we have checked off another thing on our list, which was getting rid of that high idle. Now I have a few other things like, uh, oh, the shifter's also taken care of. And I gotta put the latch on for the hood, which before I do that, I wanna service the horns. There, There's no power going, well, there's power going to the horns, but it's either too low voltage or we have a, uh, an open ground. So we're gonna work on that in a couple of days. I say we, it's just me in, in here in winter weather. And the other thing is uh, the car's almost out of gas, so I think I should drive to a gas station pretty soon, so I won't run it much more anymore. And I don't, I may have unplugged something, hold on. I unplugged one of the uh, wires that actually goes from a temperature sensor, it's a single wire, uh, bye, to my temperature gauge. And I was like, my, my engine's reading cold after 10 minutes. Okay, there's a lot of, tight spaces in here. Like you really need small hands to be under the intake manifold, but thankfully there's not much really. Oh, it looks like my valve cover's weeping. The valve cover gasket? Sometimes there's just no winning with these things. Either it'll stop in time or I've gotta redo it and put some sealer or just go for a cork seal if I can. So those paper seals, ugh. I think I had a Felpro on the Miata and it started leaking after some time too. Anyway, that's uh, that's all we got. Oh yeah, and uh, the quick way to check, as you can see in the video, I was grounding out terminals for the existing pump that I had, the Volvo branded one, and I'm, I'm really glad that they, one, kept it, and two, I was getting good readings for resistance through all the different motor windings, which is what you're doing when you're going between terminal one and three, two and three, and then one and two. All right, thanks for watching. This is a lot of information in one video. And I started going in one direction and I ended up being completely kind of wrong and off for the, the year. Um, and then I went out to this direction. Now I think that 87 and 88 will probably be with that AutoZone. I don't, I have no idea what the AutoZone paperwork was about. And uh, you know, at this point, who knows? <laughs> because LH 2.4 only has two terminals.